Good morning everyone, my name is Riley and welcome to my first video of my vlogging series. Um, today we will be racing at uh, the famous Ipswich Kart Club for round 6 of 8 for tag restricted titles. Today we are the feature class of the day. Uh, we will have qualifying, two heats and a final. Currently at home right now, I just woke up like literally 5 minutes ago. It's super cold outside, it's like 9 degrees, and the track's currently at 7. Um, I haven't had breakfast yet, so I'll probably do that, and I'll just load up the last of my gear, and then I'll probably head out there. And once we get there, we'll set up track side, and then do a track walk, hopefully, and then uh, fit new tyres on to start the day, and then just do whatever, and then fit my GoPros as well. Uh, when I get to the track, and I gotta get fuel on the way too, so that's important. So qualifying's just kicked off 40 minutes ago. Um, some of the classes are out there now. Qualifying, restricted meeting just came in. Uh, I am currently another probably 50, 40 minutes away from my own qualifying session. Um, all the cart prep is done as you can see. Still got uh, tissues blocking the airbox so dirt doesn't get in. But I've thrown a set of new tires on, ready to go, loot my chain. All the nuts and bolts are tight, ready to rock and roll. So in today's formats, we got qualifying, two heats and a final, as I said earlier. Um, and on a different track layout too than what we're used to here, normally on a club day at Ipswich. So it'd be interesting to see if there'll be a lot of new passes made on the adjusted corner. So here we are for qualifying. Here we are, just warming and scuffing our tyres up. Uh, trying to get some temperature into them as quickly as, and as harsh as we possibly can. Qualifying here is only a six minute session, um, so it's good to just get those tyres straight up to temperature as soon as possible, um, as the sessions here are very short, and the tyres do take a little bit of time to sort of heat up and bed in, but obviously aggressive steering inputs and hard braking always helps to get the tyres up to the temperature as much as possible. <clears throat> Here we are starting our flying lap. Seven, seven tenths of the litre, sixth place.
All right, so just had Quali came in at a uh, six out of 24th carts. Um, cart was very slidey in the sessions, even a little bit bouncy time to time as well in some of the low speed turns. Um, I think my tire pressure might've been too high, so I'll probably adjust that for the opening heat and I might even make just a small tweak to the chassis a little bit. Alright, so tag shooter mediums just come out and I'm gonna watch this race. Let's go boys. Come on boys, let's go. <clears throat> and we're in a way. So here we are guys, uh, heat one, our first race for the day after qualifying. So where we qualified in sixth place is where obviously our starting position is determined for our first two heats. Now uh, this is pretty much where we're going to be starting for the majority of the day is in sixth place. Uh, there you can see the traffic light turns green, we turn, switch our engines on and we're ready to go outside. At the rolling out the gate now and once again just warming up our tires getting ready for the race start so the way that this works is that we got one full lap of completion um, before we have to form up and essentially uh, start the race so during this lap it's important to keep you know to get aggressive on your tires like we were in qualifying before and just warm them up uh, as aggressively and as hard as we can because um, we don't want to be starting the race on cold tyres as that would be very unideal because cold tyres leads to a lack of grip uh, not just in the rear but also on the front as well and it will pretty much upset the balance of the go-kart so <coughs> yeah just getting really aggressive there as you can see just got to absolutely chuck the go-kart in sideways to get the temperature up in the tyres See we are guys, start of our first heat, just getting ready to go, sort of form our go-karts up uh, in two rows, single file, heading into the group positions now, waiting for the light to go out, and we are underway, bit of a rough start there from a couple of carts bumping each other, around the outside hold and maintain fifth place. Get a bit of a good exit, but everyone in front of us gets a better exit. Flying around turn three, through to the chicane now. Just going to maintain position and try to make as good a progress as we can here on this opening lap, as that's important to hold position as best we can. Cart in front of us there gets a little bit sideways, middle of the corner. We go for a look, not quite enough space there. Uh, probably not the best idea too on the opening lap, as we can sort of compromise carts around us and sort of slow each other up trying to fight around. Braking hard there through the S-bend, keeping it smooth, keeping it really really tight as possibly can. Cart in front always gets a better exit onto the main straight and as we get underway and begin our second lap, got a bit of understeer there through turn one, kind of just missed the exit of the apex there 
and you can start to start to see that the top four here uh, just steadily creeping away from us um, corner after corner maybe our tires are not quite up to scratch in terms of temperature and therefore letting us down in grip as we listen to our engine scream at around about 15 and a half kilometers an hour at about 102 kilometers uh, 102 kilometers an hour at 15 and a half rpm now beginning to start our third lap and yeah the gap as you can see is starting to just steadily stretch bit by bit by bit corner by corner and even on the third lap now uh, yeah they're just starting to sort of stretch away from us a bit and I'll be honest with you this race guys I just had a bit of understeer in my front tires um, due to having a slightly narrow rear track width which is a little bit odd because the track at this point in the morning didn't really have a lot of lo uh, rubber on the whip and it was just quite lacking in terms of track temperature um, so I went for a setup that would try to sort of give me a bit of rear grip but in doing so it seemed to have just given me a bit of um, understeer uh, from about the middle of the corners to about the exits and it was just giving me sort of a bit of a front end push effect um, from a track width just slightly too narrow which is a little bit frustrating but you can sort of start to see here that we're sort of not really losing too much momentum to the carts in front. I think around about now our tyres sort of start to come on in terms of temperature and we're sort of able to just gain a bit of grip and a bit of momentum and keep going. Not to mention too the slipstream effect that we've got on the straightaway. Um, you might think that in machines as small as these uh, slipstream just isn't really that effective but you don't really notice it until you kind of are in the midst of it all. Um, the slipstream does quite have a small, uh, it is a small effect but it's enough to sort of even make the biggest gains in karting. So once again here we are, I think we're at this point we're halfway distance now through heat one and the gap now really starts to sort of stretch out a bit and from this point on we just can't really keep up with uh, these guys in front because the understeer now starts to just get a bit severe and because of this I've sort of just had to back off my driving uh, so start lifting off throttle and braking smoothly to sort of save a bit of tire wear because I know in this heat I just don't seem to have the pace as what I normally do around my home track which is really frustrating but it is what it is but we've got a big enough gap behind uh, to sort of cover off for fifth place and sort of just manage and slow down a bit uh, as there seem to be a few incidents and a lot of a lot of fighting and battles uh, behind us I believe uh, to leave a big enough gap to sort of maintain fifth position for this race. So here we are guys, start of heat two, uh, just gridding up in the out grid now. Uh, we made a couple of changes to the go-kart uh, in between races, so this kart now feels like it's very, very drivable. Uh, we've eliminated the understeer, um, the kart's able to turn more proficiently and efficiently uh, coming off the corner and as well as being in the corner. Now gridding up, getting ready to start the race here. Outside row gets away with a good jump. Yeah, even jumping pole position on the inside there, the number 18 uh, sitting on pole position. He's been jumped by the two carts in front of me on the start there. And all we can really do is sort of follow. Even we've made two positions up on the start there to get into fourth place. Great start for us. 
turn nine. Number 18 just trying to look for a move to sort of shape up there. He gets a good run. They all get a good run on us from the exit there. Number 18 goes for a move on the number 17 there. Gets to the second place, goes wide. And we try to look for a move there on the number 17, but we just can't quite get enough done there. So now moving on to lap two. We've got a great run there, great slipstream. But we just, yeah, obviously can't make the move there. Obviously, as it's too late, as we got a late run there. Really fast run, we've got a great engine on this thing. Going through chicane now. And the number 17, he runs wide, dips a wheel off into the dirt there on the curb. Runs wide, gives us a spot. That's an automatic podium. Uh, as we look to benefit from that, we sort of make a slight mistake there, uh, going through turn 9, went a bit wide there, missing the apex, now coming onto the main straightaway, taking up the slipstream from 2nd place there, trying to get a good run, but unfortunately here, we're going to get past and we lose 3rd place, as the number 70 goes through, stealing our podium, which is rather unfortunate, but it is what it is, but all we can do now is just sort of hold and maintain pace with this guy, as he's really, really quick, he's really, really hot on the heels of this top two here today. Um, and all we can really do is just, yeah, sort of gauge and try our best to sort of hold on and see if any further incidents happen up the road here. Um, heading into turn nine there, trying to be super small as possible. Running through that adjusted turn nine, that's not our normal turn nine on this track, it's slightly adjusted. Still trying to come to grips with the adjusted turn 9 corner, very difficult, seems to be the more that the cart seem to sort of run wide there, the more pace they seem to get out of the corner, just purposely missing the apex by a couple of centimetres, just allows them to carry that bit more uh, speed through the corner, but we're starting through the fourth lap now as we run right there through turn 3, trying to take as much curve as possible, running and flying through the chicane there, and uh, yeah, just trying to see how good, just sort of gauging our opponents up in front. Uh, you can see that the top two are a lot more closer now as they sort of jostle a bit for position, get side by side there. So in, in the more that they seem to fight, the more time that they seem to lose to us behind. As you can see, third place is gradually gaining up on them. And look at that, they're still fighting, still jostling for position, still trying to be the better man. And they've, they've come together, they make contact. And number 70, third, who was in third place, and now he's just done a move, a great move, a clever, intelligent move to run to first place. Uh, the two cars that were in front just sort of jostled the position, position there, and they made the error in fighting too much. Now we've made a bit of an error there and run wide, but as it turns out, it wasn't our fault, as we've actually been hit from behind by the number 70. Uh, we did discuss post race, it wasn't an intentional incident. But as you can see here, coming through the chicane now, and yeah, he just gave us the slightest nudge. Didn't choose to overtake, chose to overtake us on the next corner with a bit of a dummy move there. But uh, like I said, there was no harm done there. Not an intentional uh, incident caused uh, intentionally. Uh, just a bit of a racing incident, it is what it is. He didn't expect me to drop off so much speed uh, coming out of the chicane there. And so in doing so, he's just given me the lightest tap. And sort of it was enough to unsettle the go card and just sort of um, obviously lo lose the spot and sort of mess my race lines up through those sequence corners there. So all we can really do now is just try to hang on and see if we can fight back as best as we can. As uh, he's not really leaving us uh, here, but he is getting a lot of better exits on probably a lot of corners here, but as you'll see, we can sort of just gradually catch up to him on the straightaway and break far later than what he can, now uh, coming into some of these hairpins, but he is just getting great launches or great exits uh, compared to us, his exit speed just you can't seem to quite match that on uh, some of these critical key corners, but we do have a rocket power super engine sitting uh, in our go-kart to sort of just hang on to him and sort of maintain position and maintain some closing speed. So he sort of just gets a bit wobbly there. Now going through turn 8, the dipper, 
trying to get a bit of a good setup here for turn nine, as I said. It's critical. And look at that, he dips another wheel into the dirt there, uh, getting some dirt, some debris over his tires, and constantly looking over his shoulders to get onto this main back straight away. Um, the more he seems to be looking over his shoulder, the more he maybe put himself in the track. Look at that again, he hits the inside curve and he hits a poor exit off the final turn. Look at that, we've got a, such a good run and we try to like lunge for a move. Not quite enough space there, just something had to back out there. Um, yeah, there's just, there was not enough space there. Honestly, having the inside to turn one leads to the outside to turn two. And usually that can either lead to incidents and probably not getting a perfect crossover done, which just isn't really too far ideal. And look at that, he gets sideways again. Goes wide again at the same corner a lap later now sets up us for a good passing and on the straightaway. Look at that, we've got a good run going into the inside here of turn 11 and we get the job done. We're up the inside, we are now back in the fourth position here as we I think come to the halfway point of the race. But now we skip towards the end of the race and we're not going to just finish fourth place here. We're actually going to be finishing in third place. Um, you're probably wondering how has that happened? Well, to tell you the truth, the two carts that started the two rows in front of me in, in my row have actually been given 10 second time penalties for jumping the start and getting away with it, jumping the leader. And I will bring up that clip and I will show it to you right now. All right, so I'll break it down for you here. So here we are at the start of our second race, going to start. We all form up in our grid lanes. But number 18, as you'll see on the front of the left-hand row over there, is pole position. He controls the pace at the start. But the two guys in front of me here, they go together at the start, jumping the pole sitter uh, before the light sort of switches out there, as you'll see, if you can just barely see it. Uh, thus, jumping the pole sitter and getting away. And they've both been handed two 10-second time penalties, uh, one each, and that promotes us to third. Okay, so just finished up from heat two. Um, car felt really a lot better. Um, had a lot of oversteer. Um, but with all sensitive wheel movements, managed to sort of just drive it to fourth place, which was good. Um, pretty exciting battles at the front, and with myself as well, with the number 17. Um, had a lot of fun out there. Now it's time to get ready for the final. Here we are to finish the day, starting third for the final, and at sunset too, what more could you ask at such a beautiful venue such as Ipswich Park Club? Here we are, going to start gridding up for our final, we're on the inside row with the pole sitter, and lights go out, we get underway here, going into turn one, on the outside to turn two now, and unfortunately we go wide and just get squeezed out of positions dropping us not just down to the fourth or third, but now we are in fifth behind, once again, a train of four go-karts there, and uh, the top three, super competitive, uh, but we're all pretty strong and well held together on this first start. Fourth place just climbing the curb there, unbelievable, and he still gets a great run out of that exit, that's just absolutely ballistic. Here we are, talking into the slipstream as we lean into it toward our steering wheel, braking late there, uh, cart's pretty well straightforward and pretty well on it here as we come out of the final corner to start our second round of this circuit for this race. Going into turn one again, great closing speed, but unfortunately just obviously it was going to be premature to make such a move into turn two when we're that far back as uh, the cart in front of us gets a bit screwy on the, en the entry to the corner there and sort of compromises our run a little bit into it. 
as the top three now begin to sort of just start to slightly stretch away again. Again, we both touch the curb. He looks over his shoulder. He knows I'm there. He knows I'm coming for him. Tucking it again. Can I make a move here? No, not quite. Would have been a bit slightly premature to make the move there uh, to sort of dive down the inside because I know how good that this guy is driving through corners as compared to me. He doesn't seem to have great uh, engine speed as compared to what I've got, but around this circuit, cornering speed is much more proficient than trying to focus on having uh, faster engine speed uh, geared for the, uh, the long straightaways here. But even with the shorter layout here on some of these shorter straights, it's not really worth trying to set it up for top speed, but I'm also trying to set the card up for uh, great corners, uh, great cornering speed, as it's obviously a very tight two track with a lot of uh, 90 degree to 180 degree corners. Uh, as we sort of get a bit of a rough exit there, running too wide on the curb there, breaking light, we get great closing speed again as usual, but this guy just seems to get better exits than us. And look at that, the top three are already well on their way to battling and duking it out for the, their fight at the winning positions and the top three podium positions. Um, again, as we sort of stare down into the sunset there with while trying to go through probably the most crucial corner, the, the crucial chicane. Um, and here we are, we have another lap here, we do something here, what do we do? We smack the inside curb there, and unbelievably, it's actually not bent my go-kart out, um, which was a big surprise. And here we are, the closing stages of our race. This is as close as we get to our rival in front of us, the number 17 guy, as we just sort of equal his pace all race long, uh, trying to get as close as we can, trying to sort of see he, if he'll be put under pressure from us and just make a mistake somewhere, anywhere, see if we, can, if we can just advance an extra position into fourth place. Runs a little bit wide there. We get a little bit squirrely on the brakes there and we just lose a bit of momentum and we drop back about a car length or half a car length there, uh, trying to gain uh, some time off onto this guy, but it's just, it's not enough. And we come to the end of the race and we finish in fifth place out of 24 carts for tag restricted titles. That is the end of the race meet as we slowly come into Park Ferme here at the end of our race. six uh, for tag restricted titles at Iswich Kart Club. Uh, probably the most chilled, relaxed race meeting I've done in a while. Uh, not a lot of work needed done to my go-kart through the day, just a few minor tweaks to get it all sorted. Um, sorted a few things out with, which made the kart more comfortable uh, to race with in the final, but unfortunately just missing that little bit of extra speed to catch the top three and steal fourth off the number 17 but sometimes that's racing one week you're up the next week you're down or just having an average one which is better than being b below average i suppose or picking up any damages it was good fun racing good clean racing uh always very fun to race at this home track of mine and to race just in general with some good people some fast people I hope you guys enjoy the video and I will catch you down the road some point.